would like to uh, chew on things I've heard you say more specifically and deeply on the subject of past lives. But I think, uh, for me, I think of it as like past work. Specifically, um, I'm an artist. And I, um, I heard you say once, do you know what it... We'll hear you. Okay. And then we'll get you. Okay. <laughs> Go on. So I, I heard you say once, do you know what it feels like for us when you pick up a book that you wrote in another life? And it hit me so hard. And shortly after that, this was maybe like three or four years ago, uh, the exact same, that exact thing happened. It, it was like the most beautiful day and I accidentally was really early to work. I got the time wrong and I, so I got to go to this place I'd always been admiring and I walked in and I was so guided and I found these books by this, this woman and I was, it was exactly the way you had described it in that clip I heard. I was just shaking and... And so I felt like I have this connection somehow. And when you've talked about uh, the John Adams story. Samuel. It, sorry, <laughs> Sam Adams. <laughs> and how all three were like, it's me, it's me. And, and how it can be, it's not like a one for one specificity. So the work, is it continuing for lifetimes? Does it evolve? Are we different sides of the same work? The easiest place to step into this, because it's big, is to acknowledge that you are, each of you, an eternal being. And that because you're eternal, you like the leading edge. And the leading edge is where thoughts turn to things. The leading edge is where the contrast produces the desire and the focus allows the results and the results are what you call tangible real life see it here it smell it taste it touch it physical manifestation everyone who has been physically focused who is now non-physically focused is very interested in what's going on here on the leading edge and there is an absolute continuity among all of that you don't live one physical life experience you are non-physical energy expressing yourself you like balance and you like understanding and so you do choose different environments in which to immerse yourself to activate different aspects in order to launch different rockets because it's just really really fun to do that but the difference between how it is seen from non-physical and how humans mostly want to see it is that there's not this pattern or path or pre-assigned prerequisite. It is really spontaneous, in the moment, inspired creation. That's what you come for. In other words, if we could encapsulate the attitude that the consciousnesses that you are are holding or focused upon as you are making the decisions to come into this physical experience it's more like well this should be fun let's see how this goes than it is boy I'm gonna get it right this time <laughs> because you know that there isn't any getting it wrong that it is expansion and this is what you really know you know that you are love expressing and that you mind in this lifetime connect wholly with that idea so that it just keeps recycling with you in this physical body and you also know that you may return to non-physical before you remember that again but you don't see that as any big problem because you all know a hundred percent of you know that a hundred percent of you are going to return to who you really are and that it was all of value that it was all of value and that's why it is so easy to not have regret from the non-physical perspective because you understand that it is all of value sometimes people are appreciative of us because of the clarity and the answers that we offer but 
if it were not for the clarity in the questions that you offer then this would not have been summoned in other words we really are all in this together and the wanted into the stick and the absence of what is wanted into the stick are all part of the experience and so what's the goal what's the goal of life what's the objective to live it's the active in the moment experience of becoming of continuing to become and so yes of course everything that you've lived before is part of the platform of that which you now are but we want to and we almost cut you off before we heard the extension of your question as you first sat down because none of you came into these experiences intending to recall past lives and pick up where you left off because it is not like that because you're not climbing the rungs of a ladder it's not like that people come up with these ideas like they come up with the idea of luck because they can't figure out how life works and the only reason that people can't figure out how life works is because they're trying to figure it out based upon what they're seeing with humans living instead of calibrating to the true liver of the life that is them that's why we spend almost all of our conversation wanting to help you to feel the wholeness of who you are because it's only in knowing the wholeness of who you are that you can understand what this part of you is about right now and so what you want to talk about is all these parts of you 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 and what we want to talk about is this part of you that became because of all these parts of you but it's this that's why we say there's no regression if you go back and try to figure out another life that you've lived that's regression that's trying to regain a perspective in a different time with a different set of different people with different bags of marbles in other words it's like trying to understand your parents <laughs> or their parents or even to make sense of your own childhood in other words you just cannot perceive from other than where you now stand and the biggest part of that the reason that you cannot perceive very far from where you now stand is because your inner being will not go back that's the thing that is the biggest difference between human tendencies and non-physical intentions your inner being is not looking back always looking forward to the becoming of what you've already set into motion because the path of least resistance is the becoming it's what's becoming that's where the flow is that's what's natural you see and so we never talked about past lives with anyone the story that you are reminding us all of is Jerry and Esther landing in Boston many many years ago not long after Esther had begun receiving us and as they were landing we offered a very soft thought to Esther and she was in such a blissful place she got right hold of that and the thought was you're really gonna like Boston because you have lived here before in fact it was your last place of physicality and Esther said guess what guys this was Tracy and Jerry her daughter and Jerry were with her this is where I was last physical and we said all of you all of you so you were last in physical form and Esther said who was I who was I who was I Jerry said who was I Tracy said who was I we said you'll know you'll know it was one o'clock in the morning they made their way to their hotel they dumped off their things and went right out to the streets we said when you stand before the statue that is you you will know ah oh, we were famous <laughs> the statue so off they went out into the darkness standing in front of statues there's a lot of them in Boston and when they stood before the statue of Samuel Adams all of them at the same moment in the same voice said I was Samuel Adams and then they looked at each other what is wrong with you I was Samuel Adams and we said the energy that is now in the three of you was the same energy that was in Samuel Adams <laughs> and so we said we'll show you your favorite place to eat and so Esther's wearing six inch heels and she's scraping through the cobblestones <laughs> down this place down this place down this place Jerry said I don't think we want to be back here 
in this dark, dark place. And we stopped and said, here it is. And on this old building was a plaque that said, Boston's first eatery. Then they said, one of them said, show us where we're buried. And so the next day on the tour, they got off the double-decker bus and all the headstones of all the famous people, you know, the ones that have statues, are all up front in this graveyard. And there was the headstone. And we said, not here, back there. So we walked them back and said, here you are. And it was just grass. Made no sense. And Esther said, I never thought I'd say it, but Abraham missed that one. <laughs> and then they got on the bus again. And the driver said, Oh, by the way, they've moved all the headstones up to the front to prevent looting and that sort of thing and to make it easier for people to see. So, yeah, you can pick up on what you were before, but really, why? Why? <laughs> you need to justify who you are now by who you were then. Really, you're going to make that connection? If Esther tries too hard to make that connection, they'll put her in the insane asylum. <laughs> Most of the world does not want to know. Much of the world wants to believe that this is your one chance to get it right. And if you screw it up this time, then it's all over. In other words, most people don't want to know about the continuity of their experience. And we really don't want you to know very much about the continuity of your experience either for this reason. We want you to focus on where you're going, not where you are. It's the message all day long. So really, if we're not even wanting you to examine what you think is this now reality, we want you to look over here, you really think that there's value in looking before that and before that and before that and before that and before that? If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.